Along with some of the other guys from the Lucky Gunner team, this week I am starting another round of our self-defense ammo ballistic gelatin testing. This time we're going to be testing a few dozen 38 Special and 357 Magnum loads, and we're planning to have those results ready for you guys to see early next year. While we're doing the actual testing over the next few weeks, we might not be able to put out quite as many videos and blog posts as we would like. So I apologize in advance if we are a little light on content, but we've got some really interesting stuff in the works and it is definitely going to be worth the wait. In the meantime, today I want to give a little background on just one of the rounds that we're going to be testing and that is the lead wad cutter, also called a full wad cutter. A couple of years ago, I did a short video about what a wad cutter bullet is, but I didn't offer much detail on using the wad cutter as a self-defense round. If you didn't catch that earlier video, a wad cutter is roughly a cylinder shaped bullet that is designed to be used in revolvers. Wad cutters are seated in the case so that the face of the bullet is flush with the case mouth. These were originally intended for bullseye type competition because the wad cutters leave a clean round hole in paper targets, making them easier to score. They are also typically loaded really light, so they travel at low velocities and that means they have very little recoil compared to just about any other centerfire handgun load that's out there. So why would anyone want to use a non-expanding, slow-moving bullet for self-defense? Well, the low recoil is usually what attracts people to that option. A small alloy framed snub nose might be painful for somebody to shoot with conventional self-defense ammo, but with wad cutters, they can be very manageable. Even more experienced shooters using a steel framed revolver might find that they can get accurate follow-up shots much quicker with wad cutters than with most other self-defense loads. Wad cutters also have the potential for surprisingly effective wound ballistics out of a short barrel compared to conventional self-defense ammo. Most hollow points will only expand if they get up to a certain velocity, and sometimes the little two-inch snubby barrels just don't launch those bullets quite fast enough to reach that velocity. When a hollow point fails to expand in soft tissue, it's basically acting like a round nose or a full metal jacket. It makes a hole, but it just kind of pushes its way through tissue like the hull of a boat moving through water. It doesn't create a large wound channel and it's just not as effective at stopping threats when it does not expand. A wad cutter, on the other hand, because of the flat front and that hard right angle, it does to soft tissue kind of what it does to paper. It punches a sharp hole that's just a lot more disruptive to tissue than a round nose. Even though the wad cutter doesn't actually expand, it tends to penetrate soft tissue very reliably. And penetration is really the most important thing we wanna see in a good self-defense round. So when you combine that with light recoil, a 38 special wad cutter is actually a pretty formidable self-defense round. The catch is that most snub nose revolvers have fixed sights and sometimes wad cutters are just not gonna hit to where the sights are regulated. It might be a few inches high or a few inches low. Also, thanks to the shape, it's difficult to reload with wad cutters in any kind of hurry. So a lot of guys that carry uh, wad cutters in their uh, snubby revolvers, they will use something different for a reload. So maybe they have like a spear gold dot in a speed strip, for example. Most of the major ammo manufacturers produce some kind of 148 grain 38 special wad cutter load, but they can all have drastically different velocities from one brand to the next. I did some chronograph testing with wad cutters from six different ammo makers, and I took the average velocity of 10 shots from each load fired from a two inch barreled revolver. The Winchester load was the fastest at a little over 700 feet per second. The Remington, Federal, and Magtech loads were within 50 feet per second of that. And then there's a big jump down to the Zellier and Bellet load that was close to 600. And then another massive decrease to 530 for the Fiocchi load. So there's nearly a 180 foot per second spread between these six loads. That's a 25% decrease in velocity from the fastest load to the slowest. Now all these loads still have very mild recoil, but if I was choosing one for self-defense, I would want one of the faster loads out of this batch just to make sure that I get that penetration that we're looking for. So the Winchester or the Federal or the Remington would all be good choices. You can find much higher velocity wad cutter loads from some of the small boutique ammo companies, but then you start running into diminishing returns. When you get up to like 850 feet per second with a wad cutter, there's not really any increase in performance 
performance over the more standard loads, but you do end up with a much snappier recoil, so it's not really worth the trade-off. You're sort of losing the advantage that the wad cutter gives you. We're gonna be using the Winchester wad cutter in our gelatin test, so we'll see how that compares to the jacketed hollow point loads. But even if some of those hollow points expand out of a two inch barrel, none of them are gonna be as easy to shoot as the wad cutter. So for uh, recoil sensitive shooters or for super lightweight revolvers, do not overlook the humble lead wad cutter load. 